Today on Monkey Life, concern grows for the health of elderly chimp Kalu as Jeremy offers comfort and TLC. Tell you what, that might be nice. It's nutritious soup. Baby Gwen on Nala shows she can cope without mum when she has to. She was off mum and running around, very independent, even from such an early age. And Orangutan Oshin demonstrates if there's enough of an incentive, she's prepared to climb and returns to the ground with a hoard. Monkey World in Dorset, very deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. I'm shocked. This animal is living in fear of its life. The park provides a home for more than 260 monkeys and apes from 24 different species. At Brian's group, concern is growing for the life of elderly female Kalu. She took longer than expected to recover from the effects of an anaesthetic following a health check two days ago, and is still off her food and very lethargic. She doesn't want to go outside to join the other chimps and is listless and disinterested. The team are so worried that Jeremy has been going into the bedroom to be with her and give her some much needed TLC. We're only two days post-vet check now. Signs of improvement, but I'm still very concerned about her, whether she's going to recover from this whole event. She likes the bitch rather than the sauce. Jeremy's actually been going in with her just to give her a little bit of support, because that's what she's been used to, human companionship. Tell you what, that might be nice. Don't know why he only gave me that little bit. It's nutritious soup. Oh. She says, if it's good for you, I don't want it. <laughs> Can't be good. To be honest, that's what's going to pull her through this, is the will to live. We're throwing everything we can at it, medically, husbandry-wise, hoping that we can give her that chance to live with chimpanzees again. You know, I've got everything crossed that we can fix her and the keepers can work their magic, but it's, um, we're in a critical time with Kalu and her life's in the balance right now. Not long after she arrived from South Africa six months ago, Kalu was diagnosed with type two diabetes. The team now suspect she's also suffering from pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas, which aids digestion. It also produces insulin to meet the body's needs. The two conditions often go hand in hand. Now she's getting nothing nutritionally. She might be eating, but her body isn't absorbing anything. And I believe, and that's what we all believe right now, is Kalu's problem, is that she's unable to digest all of her food. And it's really just taken a toll on her. She's you know, an older lady. She's 37, 38 years old. We're not exactly sure how old. Um, and she's suffering. Kalu's additional medical conditions were discovered during an ultrasound and series of x-rays. She's filled full of gallstones. Her gallbladder has like, I don't know, 20 or more. There's, you can just see it white on the ultrasound. Um, and that is uncomfortable as well. Whether it's truly causing her to cripple up and go off of her food and not want to get up, it's possible. We can't really do anything about that now. She's staying inside the house with the keepers and Jeremy visiting her. We just need to stay focused on trying to get her eating and drinking in a good routine to get an appetite on her and hope that we can build up her strength from what it was before, but this has just been a nutritional, perfect storm nightmare for Kalu. 
And, you know, it, it, I'm glad she's here because we can diagnose these things and then try and treat them um, and try and give Kalu that family that she deserves for those last days or years of her life. So, and I'm hoping it's gonna be years, not days. At the Gwenon house and enclosure, the family of four are outside enjoying life. It's been seven weeks since parents, Benny and Nia, welcomed their second baby. It's a healthy girl, and staff have now named her Nala, meaning princess. She's already a confident and lively little character. Gwenon's developed very quickly. At two weeks, the little one, Nala, was able to actually start eating solid food. And she was off mum and running around, very independent, even from such an early age. So, yes, yeah, she's still a juvenile, she's still suckling, and um, she's still being very well looked after by mum and dad. Uh, we have seen her playing with her older sister, Biff, as well. Um, Benny doesn't have much to do with the baby, but uh, if anything around them poses any kind of a threat, then Benny's right there giving his Gwenon threat face and um, making sure that mum and baby and older sister Biff are all well protected and out the way of danger. Benny and Nia had a traumatic start to life. They were stolen from the forests of Benin and destined for life in the pet trade. But they were confiscated in transit by the authorities in Lebanon, placed in the care of a local animal charity, and eventually rehomed at Monkey World. They became the only legally kept red-bellied Gwenons in captivity in the world, and have thrived since arriving at the park. The care team have decided the pair's two daughters are enough to complete their family for now. So, to maintain the status quo, every morning before being let outside, Mum Nia is given the contraceptive pill. Nia. Artfully hidden inside a tasty grape. At the moment, we don't want them to breed anymore. We think that four with this enclosure and the way that we can manage them is, is enough, and it's enough for them. And so, at the moment, Nia is um, being given contraception, and we give her a pill every morning, which will just stop her getting pregnant again. Um, but it isn't the end of the world. You know, if, if ever we did want her to breed again, then we just simply stop giving her the pill and she can carry on breeding. But that's not something we're looking at doing for a little while yet. This morning, the family group have been given some fresh browse, along with logs covered in seeds and nuts. Nia is once again proving to be an excellent mum, taking her role very seriously. Although, when there's food around, she sometimes forgets little Nala is there. The infant doesn't seem to mind. She's getting more and more confident every day. And she has big sister Biff to watch and learn from. In the wild, Gwenon groups are constantly on the move, foraging for food in the tree canopy. Babies have to cling on to mum or learn quickly to keep up. It hasn't taken long for Nala to grasp this lesson. While Mum Nia is occupied looking after her infant, 17-month-old sister Biff is spending more time with Dad Benny, keeping him on his toes. Watching over one very active youngster is hard work, but two, well, that's going to be a real handful. I'm not sure if it will make life easier for the parents having two very energetic babies. I think as they grow up together, they're just going to get more, more of the playing that we're seeing will, will happen. And hopefully it will mean that Nia and Benny can have a bit of a break and that the girls will be able to entertain themselves as well. It really is a nice young family group and really as natural as we can give them a life is what we've tried to do. It's been a month since the care team completed one of the park's biggest ever shake-ups of its primate residents. Seven out of 24 woolly monkeys have now been relocated to different groups. 
It's led to the creation of Monkey World's first ever all-male woolly bachelor group. The move was vital because woolly monkeys are prone to stress, and some of the mixed groups contained too many males. A number of individuals needed to be relocated for social reasons, and to maintain the balance of the gene pool, and it seems to have paid off. There are now four happy and contented groups. Three out of our four woolly groups have had sort of new members, um, the bachelor group being a, a complete new, new group, obviously. Um, so it was the first time we've tried sort of a group like this at the park, uh, especially with three so relatively big boys. Um, they're doing quite well. We can never really predict how the, the groups are going to kind of sort of gel together and who's going to be where. Um, it's an ever-changing thing, especially when you've got youngsters growing up. So yeah, at the moment, we're, we're quite happy with how they've actually um, got getting along. Um, so yeah, it's just, just kind of keeping an eye on them and making sure they're all still happy living with each other. Today, the top woolly monkey group, led by Lavar, are in for a real treat. They're being given whole fresh strawberries, along with mashed up avocado, frozen in pine cones. Both foods are full of vitamins and nutrients to help keep them fit and healthy. But the prickly pine cones may test their patience. The team aren't making it easy, hiding the food and tasty treats all around the large tree filled enclosure. Zingu is first out. She has a new baby on board, so takes a slow and measured approach, contact calling the others as she goes. The infant, now just over a month old, is a boy, and staff have named him Leroy. He clings on tight as Zingu moves around the enclosure on the hunt for food. When mum hangs upside down to feed, Leroy must too, clinging on securely to her fur with fingers and toes and wrapping his tail around her body. It's no mean feat for little Leroy, but will help build his strength and coordination as he grows. Zingu's eldest daughter Olivia demonstrates how important this is. Woolly monkeys are perfectly adapted to life in the trees, and Olivia uses her tail to suspend herself freeing up both hands to grab as many strawberries as she can. Her sister Layla, just two years old, has grown up in this enclosure and has a great head for heights, confidently moving around the ropes and trees on her own. The troop are all under the watchful and caring eye of leader and dad, Levar. He's now 30 years old, getting on for a woolly monkey, but still fit and healthy. He's been alpha male for more than 19 years. There are two other younger males in the group, Cosmo and Bueno Junior, who clearly has a liking for frozen avocado. But Lavar has now got another adult female to keep him company. Pichua joined the group a month ago and has settled in incredibly well. She has taken to life in the big forest enclosure, comfortably navigating the trees and apparatus. She's also struck up a relationship with Olivia. After an incredibly busy eight months for the Woolly Monkey team at the park, all their charges are settled and happy in their new groups they'll continue to monitor the well-being of these very special and rare monkeys. The park is experiencing some very warm weather, and as temperatures soar, keeping the primates cool and hydrated becomes a priority for the primate care staff. At the orangutan nursery, the team have come up with a way of keeping the group of five refreshed, as well as stimulating their bodies and minds. They're hiding frozen fruit inside Ketapat puzzle feeders. So they've been using these for a while now. Um, some of them are getting much better at them, some of them still do struggle, but it's a very good way um, of stopping any hoarding in the orangutan house. So all we do 
It's a very um, quite hard pattern. But you can see that this one can stretch out. We can pop some frozen fruit in there. Sometimes we'll undo it if we've got large melons and things like that as well. Um, and it just takes them a very long time to manhandle it and get it out. It gets all of their joints moving, gets them stronger as well, particularly with Oshin, that's very, very helpful. Um, so hopefully we'll see some more wildish orangutan positions um, whilst we're watching them when they go out this morning. The ketapats, stuffed with refreshing frozen melon, are suspended all around the enclosure. But James is also hiding frozen nectarines in unexpected places. You'll never know. As well as sugar-free ice lollies. The slippery, icy treats should be a fun form of enrichment for the group. The two boys, Sylvester and Bulu Mata, are first into the enclosure. They're followed by Rika, who gets the point, climbs high and snaffles some fruit in seconds. Now she needs to work out how to get to the rest. She works away at the puzzle feeder, demonstrating amazing core strength and agility as she clings onto the cargo net. But it's the youngest member of the group, Mimi, who dives straight in with great skill, sucking on a nectarine with an ice lolly nonchalantly slung over one shoulder. Rika is in Olympic gymnast mode, prizing out a nectarine with her hands while holding onto an ice lolly with her feet. Definitely a gold medal performance. In the wild, food sources, particularly seasonal fruit, can be scarce, so an orangutan's metabolism prepares for leaner times by storing fat. Orangutans also have the slowest metabolism of any primate. It's the same with captive orangutans. They have a general tendency to put on weight due to their often sedentary lifestyle. It's why the primate care staff are constantly thinking up ways to keep the primates active. Oshin is one of their greatest challenges. For the first 13 years of her life, she lived as a pet in South Africa. First in the family home, and later an enclosure. She walked upright, spending most of her time on the ground. Still her preference. She has a tendency to hoard food, but today, if she wants a treat, she'll have to work for it. The lure of the frozen delicacies up high forces her to climb. And when she puts her mind to it, and there's a reward in sight, she's perfectly capable. But in typical Oshin style, she collects as many as she can carry and is soon back on the ground, happy and content to work her way through the horde. The challenging frozen treats have kept the nursery group active and interested and it's turned a warm start into a pretty cool morning. Primates are generally highly social animals, with many species living in large family groups or extended troops. They have well-developed communication and social strategies, which help build and affirm relationships. But many primates arrive at the park having been rescued from solitary lives. They don't know how to interact and behave with others of their own kind. None more so than the park's marmosets. Animals that come in for the pet trade are very different uh, because they most of the time have lived on their own, taken away from the parents at a young age, so they don't have the social skills that most marmosets in, or obviously in the wild or in zoos would naturally have. Um, and that's one of the biggest things that we have to face when doing intros. Every marmoset in the park has their own personality and we have to try and match those personalities, a bit like a dating site. And they're not easy and they're not, um, they're time consuming and it's, it can be quite difficult if they don't get on because all you really want when they get here is to, to let them start their happy life, but before we can get to that, we have to get them through this introduction process. Putting individuals together isn't always easy. Six months ago, Alison rescued three female marmosets. Oh, it's very exciting. All came from different circumstances and backgrounds, but they had one thing in common. They were all victims of the British pet trade. The team at Monkey World excel at matchmaking groups and pairings with their own kind, 
and got to work. It took numerous attempts, plenty of patience, and multiple introductions, but their futures are looking promising. So currently, touch wood, right now at the moment, six months on, we have um, all those three in comfortable pairs and happy and settled at the moment. So Jenny is living with Albert, uh, Queenie is living with Mojo, and Millie Martin is living with Jock. Of the three, Millie Martin is the team's biggest success story. She's a young female common marmoset who suffered horrific abuse at the hands of one of her former owners. When she arrived at the park, she was terrified, nervous of everything and everyone. Her rehabilitation has been remarkable. With the love and care of the primate care team, she's starting to flourish, and she has a new friend, Jock. It's really nice to see Millie now and to see her progression from when she arrived at the park, but she's still not perfect. She's still not completely happy and completely settled. And I think it's going to be a very, very long time until she is that way. But from the six months she's been here, she has made a massive, massive improvement and we're really happy with how it's going. Today, the pair have been given a treat. Large pine cones stuffed with grapes and a little bit of jam. Millie arrived at the park malnourished and underweight. Today, she's looking far healthier. She's thoroughly enjoying today's enrichment, reaching and stretching, using her core strength to seek out the tasty morsels. And when she's tired, she's confident enough to join Jock in the hammock and allow him to groom her, an important step in social bonding. Millie is well on her way to a brighter, happier future. It's been a busy year for Alison and the team, with numerous rescues, both at home and abroad. Yeah, yeah, more yeah. than that. Yeah. Oh, that stinky box. Yay. On top of that, the team had to deal with a global pandemic, posing a threat to them and their charges. To be honest, the unknown is perhaps the greatest sort of scare of all. We just don't know. But as the months went by, newborns brought hope. And while the majority of the primate residents flourished, and the lives of some remained in the balance, no matter what next year brings, Alison and the team will continue in their mission.